what's up everyone Chris here from Project Option and in this video we're gonna talk about the basics of puts and calls so you're gonna learn the basic characteristics of put options and call options such as strike prices and expiration dates and you're also gonna learn how puts and calls change in value relative to changes in the stock price that those options are traded against let's do it alright so we're just gonna start off with some basic definitions so an option is just a financial contract that gives the buyer the right to buy or sell 100 shares of stock at the option strike price at or before expiration. Now a strike price is the stock price in which the option buyer can purchase or sell 100 shares upon exercising the option. And lastly, an expiration is the date in which an option ceases to trade on the market and converts to shares of stock or expires worthless. The last basic characteristic you need to know about an option is the standard option contract multiplier. Now this sounds like a fancy term, but all it means is what you need to multiply the options price by to figure out its actual dollar value. So standard equity options have a contract multiplier of 100 because they represent 100 shares of stock. So if you look at an options price and it's trading for 50 cents, you have to multiply that 50 cents by 100 to get the option's actual value. So a 50 cent option is actually worth $50. A $2.25 option is actually worth $225. And an option that's worth $13.25 is actually worth $1,325. So if you wanted to buy that $13.25 option, you'd actually need $1,325 in your trading account to perform that trade. Now that you know the basic characteristics of options, let's go ahead and look at some in-depth examples so that you can see how these concepts relate to call options and put options specifically. So starting with call options, let's go ahead and look at the call option from the buyer and seller's perspective. So from the buyer's perspective, a call option represents the right to buy 100 shares of stock at the called strike price at or before expiration. Now a call buyer profits when the call's price that they purchased is higher than the initial purchase price. So if an option is worth $5 and a trader buys that call option, if the option rises to $6, the trader will have a profit of $100 because remember that the contract multiplier for an option is 100. So a $5 option is actually worth $500. And if that $5 option rises to $6, the option is worth $600, which represents a $100 increase in the option's value. Now, from the seller's perspective, a call option represents the obligation to sell 100 shares of stock at the called strike price if they're assigned. Now, don't worry about that term yet. We'll get to it in the exercise and assignment section. Now, a call seller profits when the call's price falls to a value lower than they sold it for. So if a call seller sells a call option for $5 and the option falls to $3, their profit on that position will be $200 because they sold an option that was worth $500 and now the option is only worth $300. So therefore they can buy it for $300 and collect that $200 profit. So now let's go ahead and look at an actual call option example to see how the options price changes when the stock price changes. So since a call option represents the ability to buy 100 shares of stock at the strike price of the option, call options increase in value when the stock price increases and decrease in value when the stock price decreases. So if you look at the graph on the right hand side, we can clearly see that as the stock price increases, the value of the 190 call increases. On the other hand, when the stock price falls, we can see that the call price decreases. Now why does this make sense? Well, if the stock price is currently at $195, a person who owns the 190 call has value because they have the ability to buy 100 shares of stock for $5 below the market price. Now if that stock price rises to $210, that 190 call is going to be that much more valuable because now the person can buy shares for $20 below the current market price. So as the stock price rises further and further above the call strike price, the call will become more valuable because that call holder has the ability to buy shares at a steeper discount to the current price of the shares. Now in this particular case, the call option started near $5 and ended near $20 over this time frame. Now if an option starts at $5 and ends at $20, the buyer of that option will have a $1,500 profit 
and the seller of that option will have a $1,500 loss. Now this is on a per contract basis. So if someone bought one of these call options for $5 and sold it near 20, their profit would be $1,500 per contract. On the other hand, if someone sold this option for $5 and later bought it back for 20, they would have a $1,500 loss per contract. So call buyers anticipate that the stock price will increase because the call price will increase and call sellers anticipate that the stock price will decrease because the call price decreases as the stock price falls. Now the last thing we'll talk about in regards to this graph is why the call option has any value when the stock price is trading below the strike price of 190. Because no one's going to want to exercise the call option at 190 to buy shares at $190 per share when they could just buy shares in the open market for $185 per share. Well the answer is that let's say there's 30 days left until this call option expires that means there's 30 days left for the stock price to increase and therefore the call price to increase so when an option is out of the money so when the strike when a calls strike price is above the current stock price that option might not be worthless because there's still time for that option to become valuable before it expires all right well that wraps up call option basics now let's run through the same exercise and talk about what put options are and then look at an example of how put options change when the stock price changes. All right, like we did for call options, let's look at put options from the buyer and seller's perspective. So from the buyer's perspective, a put option represents the right to sell 100 shares of stock at the put strike price at or before expiration. Now a put buyer profits when the put value increases to a value that's higher than what they purchased it for. So if someone buys a put option for $10 and that put option rises to $12, that represents a $200 profit on that option because a $10 option is worth $1,000. So if they buy it for $1,000 and it rises to $1,200, they have a profit of $200. Now from the seller's perspective, a put option represents the obligation to buy 100 shares of stock at the put strike price if they are assigned. Now a put seller profits when the puts value drops to a price that's lower than what they sold it for. So let's say a put seller sells a put for $20, which represents a $2,000 credit. If that put option falls to $15, then that put option is now worth $1,500. So if they buy it back for $1,500 when they sold it for $2,000, they'll lock in a $500 profit on that trade. Now let's go ahead and look at how a put option reacts to changes in the underlying stock price. All right, so as you can see here, unlike call options, put options increase in value when the stock price falls and put options decrease in value when the stock price rises. So why does that make sense? Well, if we look at the graph on the right, we're looking at a put option with a strike price of 95 which means the put has the ability to sell 100 shares of stock for $95 per share if the option is exercised. So as we can see as the stock price falls from 95 to 90 the puts price increases because the put option has the ability to sell shares at a higher price than what they're currently trading for in the market. So if the stock price is at 92 and a half that 95 put has some value because the holder can sell shares for $2.50 higher than what they're currently trading for in the market. Now if the shares drop from 92.5 to 90, the put is going to be even more valuable because now the put buyer can actually sell shares $5 higher than where they're currently trading in the market. So as the stock price falls further and further below a put strike price, the put option will become more and more valuable. Now as we can see in this example, the stock price actually rose to a price higher than the put strike price. And as we can see, the put option still had some value because like we talked about in the call option example, when there's still time before an option expires, it'll still hold some value because there's still time for the stock price to fall, which will cause the put price to increase. So just because the stock price is above the put strike price, it doesn't mean that it's going to have no value as there's still some value in the put because it could eventually be worth more. However, in this example, the stock price was above the put strike price at expiration, which means the put expired worthless. Now, in terms of actual profits and losses, this put started near $3, rose to $6, and then expired worthless. So from the put buyer's perspective, if they bought it for $3 and it rose to $6, that represents a $300 increase in the actual premium, which represents a $300 profit. 
Now, since the option expired worthless, they would have lost everything they paid for it, so at expiration, the put buyer would have lost $300. Now, from the put seller's perspective, they sold it for $3 and it rose to $6. That would be a loss of $300 per contract, but since the put expired worthless at expiration, they would have made a profit of $300. All right, well that covers the basics of puts and calls, so now let's just recap what you've learned in this video. So you learned that options basically have three basic characteristics. There's a strike price, which is the stock price that an exercised option will buy or sell 100 shares at. There's the expiration, which is the date the option ceases to trade on the market and settles to its final value. And there's a contract multiplier, which basically says that if you see an option's price as $5, the option is actually worth $500. So $5 times the contract multiplier of 100 equals $500. And in terms of calls and puts from the buyer and seller's perspective, remember that from the buyer's perspective, a call option represents the right to buy 100 shares at the strike price. And for the seller, it represents the obligation to sell 100 shares at the strike price. Now for puts, the put buyer has the right to sell 100 shares at the strike price, while the put seller has the obligation to buy 100 shares at the strike price if they're assigned. Lastly, remember that calls rise in price as the stock price increases and fall as the stock price decreases, whereas puts increase in value when the stock price falls and decrease in value when the stock price rises. All right, well, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I hope everyone learned something. If you enjoyed this and you want alerts when we have more videos that come out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a follow on Twitter because we publish new content there as well.